Hi there, welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and this is a screencast on how to crossfade um, an image. So the idea is you roll your mouse over one image and it fades out to reveal a new image. Um, this can either be done with a click or a mouse over or, or what have you. So I'm going to show you three methods of achieving this. The first method um, was originally by Carl Swedberg and it shows you how to take an absolutely positioned image and create the effect. The second version will show you um, a relatively positioned image or, or not a positioned image um, with jQuery doing all the markup for you. And the third method will show you a CSS only version with no JavaScript to create this effect. So method one This is the required markup for the effect. So you need a, a div that contains the two images that you're going to fade to and from. Your first element is the image that you start off with. And then inside of another div is the second image that you're going to end up on top of. So on the page, this just looks like this. Um, this is the markup I've got the, the sorry the CSS that I've got on at the moment, which our fade div is positioned absolutely fifty by fifty, and then our fade uh, sub div, so our, our hidden image, is currently hidden, positioned absolutely top and left zero. So if I get rid of this display none and show you the page again, you can see our end image is sitting directly on top of our our, ta our starting point. So when I roll my mouse over the starting point this image here will fade up and when I roll out it will fade down. So when the document is ready we're going to find the fade elements and use a hover event which takes two functions as its parameters the first one being the hover in and the second one being the hover out so when I hover in the first thing I want to do is grab this div so var div equals so we're using CSS2 to target the very first the, 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 the direct descendant child here um, we could limit it even more by using a class or we could use first um, but our markup is simple enough that this will do so we will do div dot fade in two fifty. So let's just give that a test. So it's hidden, mouse goes in, it fades up. So when I hover up when I hover out, I want to grab the same div again. Div dot fade out two fifty. So there's a simple effect. The only problem is when I go back and forth several times, the effect keeps going. So the best way of doing this is if the div is animated, then we're going to handle the fader tr transition slightly differently. Otherwise, we're going to fade it in from scratch. So div dot stop stops the stops the current animations from running, and then we're going to fade it to one opacity of one in two hundred fifty milliseconds. So this means that if this transition this this effect is currently going, and say the opacity is at zero point five, 
it'll pass this test, so it will say the, the div is currently animating. Stop the animation from going from 0.5 to 0.4 to 0.2 and so on, and fade it from its current opacity up to 1. And the same is true going back the other way. Oh, no, sorry, I've gotten these the wrong way around. It's the timer first and then the target. That shouldn't be 1, that should be 0. So, as my mouse rolls over, the effect starts going. So you can see this part actually working if I slow down the uh, the fade out effect. So I put it at three, th three seconds to fade out. When I mouse over it, it's fading down. I go back in, it just fades back up again. So that's method one. Method two we use jQuery to add all the extra markup to the page to create the effect. So the way that I've done this is dropped a single image onto the page. We're going to give it a class of fades so that I can target it properly. This is the source, which is a starting point. And I've used the background image CSS property to specify the end image that I want to transition to. And you'll see that there's no extra CSS here. So method 2, because it's just a single image, there's nothing to it. So, this is the equivalent of document.ready, and I'm going to say image.fade each. So by doing each, I'm setting myself up to be a, a plugin. Um, in fact, I'm going to put a couple of these images on here, so we've got three to just kind of see the example um, taking effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a cached copy of the jQuery instance of, uh, of this element because I know that I'm going to be reusing the jQuery instance throughout my code I might as well take a cache instead of keep on instantiating a new jQuery version of the element. It just means that uh, if I've got a bigger application it, it will run slightly faster I need to get the target image that I'm transitioning to. So it'll be the CSS background property of the dollar dollar uh, variable. So CSS dot background image. If I just drop this out to the log. You'll see it's not quite the right format I want it to be because I'm going to be creating a new image on the fly. I actually want this section here, so I need to strip out the the braces, the, the, sorry, the brackets and the URL part. So I'm going to use just a, a quick regex to get rid of this. So I'm saying starts with URL or the right bracket or the left bracket. So that should strip it out. Oh, still with the brackets. Oh, G. So G says keep finding, find this and find that and find that throughout the string and just get rid of all the instances. So there we go, that's our target image we want to go to. So now I'm going to do a big chain. So I'm going to wrap this image in a span. I'm then going to append a new image inside of that, which will have our target image. And I'm going to apply some CSS changes to, to each of these images so that they overlay each other and they're ready for the transition. So when I do a wrap, I'm going to, I need the span to be position relative so that when I 
set a position absolute on on the uh, the transition to or, or starting point, it will be absolute to the span that it's sitting inside of. And note when I when I wrap, I actually have to put the closing tag. If you don't do that, it won't it it won't put the image at this place. So I'm going to um, change the selector by using parent. So at this point, I'm now my selectors are the the span elements. I'm now going to prepend a new image tag. So currently, our our HTML will look like. Well, I can show you what the HTML looks like. Just because it's on new line doesn't mean that it's a, a separate function. It's uh, I could just have it all on one long line, but I, I'm breaking it down as new line so I can read it better. Um, let me just refresh this and show you the markup that we've got. So I've got the span. I've got this blank image that we prepended inside of the span, and we've got the original image that we start off with. So that's where we're up to so far. I'm now going to change my selector from the span to the first image, i.e. the blank one. And I'm going to set the source attribute of this blank image to our target that we, we collected from our, our starting point. So let's just have a quick look at that now. So the HTML, you can see the rendered HTML is now a span with our end image and our start image. So I'm going to start a new bit of jQuery. I'm going to change the CSS properties of, our, of this original image. Position absolute and left zero. Sorry, also top. Top needs to be this dot offset top. Um, there's a full plugin on the jQuery for Designers website where this this particular value doesn't work perfectly in Opera and Safari so I've got a, a fuller version that kind of goes through all the different versions of browsers and, and finds the uh, the best top position so you can see now that rendered HTML because this is positioned absolutely it's sitting directly on top of this image here so if I if I hide this image you'll see the image underneath it. And the top, this is the offset top. Um, and like I said, it's different depending on which browser you're in. If you're in Safari, you don't need it. If you're in Opera, um, you take it from a slightly different variable. But like I said, the, the jQuery for Designs website has a full plugin that has the different versions. Um, so now that we've rendered our markup, we want to create the effect. So we're going to use the same hover function as the, the first version. And instead of fade to and fade, sorry, fade in and fade out, I'm going to use dot animate. So I'm going to say, because I've still got this cached object, I don't need to. In method one, I was uh, doing. A, I was selecting the, the the element that we wanted to create the transition to, but since I've already cached it, I don't need to do that. And I'm going to just stop any animations that are running on it at the moment, and just animate the opacity. So it's 
So when we hover over, we want our starting image to disappear. And when we hover out, we stop the current animation. And we bring the opacity to 1. Oh, sorry, we need a, um, a timer for that. So we'll, we'll fade in at 250 milliseconds, and we'll fade out at 3 seconds. You can see as this wraps down as well, the effect still works. And if we look at the source code, the original source code is just one single image. Now, you need to be careful if you want to style this or float it right or anything like that. You need to make sure that you test in your browser, your different browser you're targeting because the the positioning here, this is this is where it will overlay your your starting image. So um, any kind of styling you do to this image might affect this these properties. So it might be easier just to wrap it in a div and then style this div, for instance, if you wanted to float it left. So we could do class float and in our CSS. I haven't tested this, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. Float, float left's the wrong way, sorry, float right. Oh, there we go. So the tr the because our rendered HTML is within this this float right div, everything else is everything inside of here is still floated over to the right, so it still works fine. But you need to be careful when you're testing that. Okay, so method three, we start off. This is the non-JavaScript version. We start off with the same, the, the rendered markup that came from method 2. So that is a span, our end image, and our start image. And the HTML that goes with that is that the span has position relative. Our start image, which appears last in the markup, has position absolute, left, naught, opacity 1 and when we hover over it we're going to bring the opacity down to naught. Now the thing about this one, I'm being a bit cheeky because actually it only works in Safari 3.1 at the moment. So that's our transition. Well that's not transition, sorry, that's just a straight rollover. That will work in Firefox as well. He says, yep, sort of. And by adding one line to our CSS on the hover, sorry, on the, uh, the image start, I can get it to do our transition effect. So I use WebKit, transition, opacity, one second, linear. And there's exactly the same effect, just using CSS. Uh, that's Safari 3.1 it only works in, but um, it means that if you want to build your app for uh, an iPhone or iPod Touch, you can take advantage of these CSS transitions, and you don't have to worry about JavaScript for something that is just an animation. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any feedback or any alternative methods of doing these kind of fade transitions, or love to hear it. Um, just drop a comment on jquerryfordesigners.com and um, I'll get back to you. Alright, thanks, thanks a lot.